It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine athleticism at its best. The king is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Bolting in once again. Welcome to the Sprint Lane. Paul Cochran with you. Jess Watkins and Freddie Hastings with me as always. Welcome to the show, guys. Good day, Paul. Be back. Episode Good. nine. Here we go. Can't wait. And we've got a great guest with us this week. Jackson Painting. Welcome, Jacko. How are you, mate? The king of the Riverina at the moment. He is absolutely flying down there. Mate, uh, what's got you in Sydney? Um, yeah, so we've sort of based our camp down here the last three weeks and probably look to stay on for a little bit longer just over the Breeders' Challenge series, just um, a little bit too much travelling for myself and the horses, so we've elected to uh, stay down here and get a barn at uh, the end of the um, stable and centre. Good setup to be able to be sort of itinerant and come in for a short period of time, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's unreal. It's sort of, we've got a water walker at home, so we can utilise that down there, plus the three different kind of tracks. They've got everything you need, so it's an unreal complex. They've done a really good job setting it up. Jess and the Menangle team been up in there bugging you? No, nah, no. Nah. They leave you alone, do they? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, they leave me alone. I'm down there right at the water walker, so I'm down there by myself, which is pretty good. <laughs> uh, how was your week, guys? Yeah, pretty good. We, um, we, we were a little bit different last week because we went on Monday. Of course, Tuesday um, was, was the day so that Freddie could have a day off. Is that, how, is that, <laughs> yeah. is that what it was, Freddie? Uh, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, long-standing plan uh, and uh, it, was a, it was a terrific day. Uh, I found a little – I had a little bit on the winner. Gold um, trip, you got a trip. A little bit on the winner. Well played. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Not uh, as much as I would have liked in hindsight, but hey, hindsight's twenty twenty vision. But um, no, a good day and uh, well done to all concerned. We uh, we went a day early and uh, had, a, had a good show, I thought. So we're, no pressure. We're going to back it up this week with another one. Jack Trainer was, he wasn't at his at his finest health-wise. He was good talent, but he wasn't at his finest health-wise. How do you reckon he's... Uh, how do you reckon he's pulled up a week on? Uh, well, I think he's over in New Zealand <laughs> well, at the Cup, so <laughs> I think the party he's continues. He's on the quick backup. <laughs> I let him in. <laughs> on the quick backup. How, how'd you go on the Cup, Jess? Um, yeah, no good in the Cup, but in the races beforehand, I managed to find Godolphin's horse that won at $41. So, oh, happy nice. days. Always oh, happy with that. Jacko, any luck? <laughs> no, nah, I um, think I backed the winner in the last race and I had to get a little bit back on Wagga Trots that night, so I didn't... Uh, Go too bad, at Wagga. <laughs> we, we did actually say that, thank goodness, Wagga was on mm. uh, uh, after the cup. This, that could be our saviour. Certainly yeah. was for you, yeah? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, did. they had a good meeting there. I mean, the weather was um, the weather was uh, was a tough night, you know, there. And, and I, I was talking to Greg Gangle in the, in the day leading up to it, and, yeah, during the day, and th- there was a little bit of nervous energy, but they managed to get a full full card in. And, and what a great, ad, you know, sort of flow on then from... From great racing, not only here in Sydney, but obviously in Melbourne, which is, you know, the the, the race that stops the nation, as we say every year. But to, to be able for, you know, the the um, the racing industry to move on to to a great night of of um, trotting and pacing there at River and a Paceway, um, you know, what a fantastic add on that was. Certainly so was. We've had a big week, and we're going to get into it for you right now. So we, as we said, we we ra- we had the show on Monday, which. We were actually racing on Monday afternoon, so that's one we haven't touched on. Jess, there was a great story that unfolded really early on the card with Norm Wall, and uh, there was a a breeding double. So race two, race three it might take a little bit of explaining. So the way the way it worked was we had Normie Wall, and he's eighty nine. So. Well done. What, and he's a great fella too, isn't he? He's lovely. Nature's gentleman. And, yeah, for anyone to train a winner at 89 years of age, that's just incredible in itself. So the way it worked was he had the – he he bred and owns the winners of both races two and three. Now, race two was won by Winner Mozza. Winner Mozza is a five-year-old gelding by Lombo Pocket Watch out of Modern Classic. And then in race three, it was spot on – Hang on, Freddie. What are we? Chick. We're going with chick, right? Yeah, it so reads chic, as so in the fashion chic. But uh, Norm has indicated they wanted it pronounced chick. Yeah, and Spot and the chick. context to that question is Freddie's got form in people people calling him out on on chick or cheek on this one, isn't there? Yeah, so. Oh, there's a, there, you get some people on Twitter that say, oh, what's he calling it chick yeah. for? It says chic, but yeah, there, there was a, a, a you know, the connections wanted it. Chick, so we go with that. Whatever so, they pay the bills, exactly. <laughs> so sport, so race three was spot on. Chick, a seven-year-old mare out of 
again, out of Lombay Pocket Watch and Modern Classic. Now, we believe they're the only two progeny out of, out of the mare as well. So a really, really unique story that played out races two and three. One went round at about a $3 favourite. The other one went round at $41. So it's not like they were... You know, the market thought they were matched up in that regard either. And to be able to go on and win back-to-back races, just a unique and great story, Jess. Uh, yeah, it really is. And then throw in his age as well. It's just incredible. And they stand out on the track. I think Winamots is a grey and spot-on chicks a roan as well. So they definitely stand out when yeah. they're out there. Lombo Pocket Watch definitely threw his Some mark there. there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, great for Normie and all involved there. Just unusual to see greys too, isn't it, Jacko, going round? And- yeah, it is. Uh, very, very rare to see these days. I think there was actually two of them, one at Goulburn that day. I think one of Tian's was it a grey as well. Yeah, yeah. So you had uh, – so Tian was training one and Norm was training the other. And you had Glenn McAuley, McAuley driving one and Joshy Gallagher was driving the other one, wasn't he? So Yeah, yeah Joshy was on spot on chick and Tian Sutton trains Winamotza and Glenn drove um, Winamotza yeah. there. And Norm still owns both of them. So, as I said, a little bit of a convoluted story and, you know, there's lots of moving parts to it. But, I mean, Put it together, just a unique and, and great story and, and wonderful that, you know, Norm is uh, still involved in our sport at 89 for, for starters, but to be able to get results, it's, uh, uh, that's fantastic. So we mentioned mentioned Tian Sutton. She had a training double there at Goulburn and, and, and G-Mac, friend of the show, Glenn McElhenney, who, who was uh, one of our early guests on the show, he drove both of them. So well done, Tian, and to, to G-Mac. Joshy Gallagher had a driving double there at Goulburn as well. Obviously, one of those uh, was in that that uh, Norm Wallen double. So, and that was part of a double for Kerry Ann Morris and the Lucky Lodge team. Robbie had a driving double. So, gee, we're getting a little bit. We, we're jumping around with all these doubles. We, we, we mentioned in last week, I think it was, where we had these unique situations where there was no doubles on cards. Well, certainly didn't happen at Goulburn that day. Uh, and, and then, if, if we have a look at the Lucky Lodge team, so. They had Queen of Strathfield winning there at Goulburn, backed up again at Penrith on, on the Thursday and won again. That, that's, a, that's a horse going places, Freddie. Oh, she's always been a useful trotter. She's excelled here in the past, but uh, she, she can get around all types of tracks. She's pretty bomb-proof, doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and uh, she, she, uh, she roped them in at Penrith in the latter stages. Uh, that was in the Peter Sullivan Memorial uh, to uh, you know, perpetuate the memory of uh, one of the real good guys of the sport, and he loved the trotters' soul, didn't he? And uh, yeah. uh, she came down the outside and, and grabbed them. It was a great go. Five live chances around the turn, and that's how it played out. Jacko, not that common for a horse to say go around on a Monday and then go around again on a Thursday. Never mind win both of them. I guess when you're the one so closely engaged with the horse, either as a driver or a trainer or working them, you just know that hey, we should go around again here. Yeah, obviously um, Kez and the Lucky Lodge team were happy with the way it pulled up with the run earlier on in the week, and yeah, they got rewarded by putting it around again because it was very impressive. Well, as we said, backed up at Penrith on Thursday, won again. Now, there was a training double at Penrith for Simon Begeny, uh, winning drives for both three sons, Jake and Clayton, so nice little family family affair there. Jess? Yeah, those boys are doing a great job. Simon's team's been going super of late. And I think Fred touched on before the show that both Jake and Clayton are graduates of the mini trot. So great to see our younger talent coming through the driving ranks. And Mason Bagini, their their younger brother, uh, he was driving. I'm just trying to think whether Mason won a race at the mini trot. So I know uh, Jet Turnbull was a guest visitor there because uh, uh, his dad had some horses in at Penrith. But uh, Mason, I think, had a placing. So they've... uh, very skillful. They all came through the, the Penrith Club at the Mini Trots and uh, the two older boys, they're doing good things and I say it'll be a matter of time before we see Mason as he gets older uh, transitioning to uh, to the, the bigger horses. Fantastic. Well, we've mentioned Kerry Ann Morris a couple of times, but with good reason. And, and the, the the really hot streak through the week continued. She won the last at Menangle on Saturday with Fear Cruising and that was, again, part of another double for Joshy Gallagher who's had a, an incredible week. He's been notching up doubles here, there and everywhere throughout the week. He's a, he's a pretty uh, solid talent, isn't he, Jacko? Yeah, no, nah, he's a star, Josh. He um, just gets the job done every week. He's see him out here working hard all the time and he just obviously gets rewarded by that, so it's good to see. Mate, there was another double. Had to win that, sorry, he had yeah. to win that race in the stewards room, that second one, because yeah. he had to survive a protest. Cam fired in an objection and uh, the protest hearing went quite a while. It was about uh, 30 minutes or thereabouts, but it was dismissed and he kept the race. So he had to... Uh, you know, he certainly he won a Inter-Dominion uh, on protest and he had to survive a protest there. So he's pretty 
might start calling him Perry Mason. He must be very good at uh, prosecuting his case in the stewards room. There's no bro code when it comes to these things, is it? They're good mates, those two. <laughs> Uh, Go and fight yeah, it but out. that's be good mates out here, but out there on the yeah. track, you've and got to... Yeah, it's yeah. every man for himself, white really, and you'd, you'd subscribe to that theory, I'm sure, Jackson. Yeah, no, that's right. Once a bit like footy, once you cross that yeah. white line, you, you're uh, going for the best possible possible result. So, yeah, no, yeah. it was too good. What's that like, stepping into the stewards room? Well, it can be a little bit intimidating when you're a younger fella, but like as a bit like everything in life, you sort of get used to it, but obviously the um, less you're in there, the better. Yeah. Well, mate... I hate to bring this one up. There was another double on the card at Menangle, and it was for David Kennedy, who you are, his leading stable driver. Rock and roll runner and punt away both won, and Jack Trainer was in the seat because, uh, mate, you got a little bit of a holiday there, and you couldn't take the drives. I guess you're happy that the horses won. I guess you're happy for Dave, but it must have been tough as well. Yeah, no, it was, but um, as you said, it was yeah, really, 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 really happy to see. I said to Jack, getting on it. We had three in that he was meant to drive, but one was obviously scratched later on, but I was pretty confident them two would run good races and Jack just put them in the perfect spot and they were just yeah, both too good in the end. And obviously you've bought them here as part of a, a, a longer campaign around the Breeders' Challenge and brought some other horses along and they're part of that. Um, I, I guess you must be happy that you can bring them to bring them to headquarters and these couple of horses that are based out of the Riverina can come here and deliver and get wins. I mean, it shows that they're... The initiative and the and the campaign that you set up was worth doing. Yeah, no, that's right. The sort of horses we brought down here were definitely all sort of metro level, and the form at Wagga definitely sort of stacks up when we bring them down here. So I was a little bit concerned last week, sort of being the first week when they were not sort of in their natural habitat, just working on different tracks and that. But um, Rock and Roll Runner went super the week before. Brado's lad ran third in the group race. He went really well. Um, and then the other horse, I can't think of the top of my mind what it was, but um, it ran a really good race. So we're sort of proof in the pudding that what we do at home can um, sort of work away from home. And, they uh, yeah, they all backed it up on the Saturday night here. We see you here a bit, but we obviously you don't drive as regularly as the ones who are based here. Again, coming back to it, must have been tough to see two winners that potentially could have been yours here on, on a big Saturday night. Yeah, no, that's I'm sort of on a wage with Dave, so I get a wage, but the extra money for driving definitely helps. But um, copped a little bit of flack off the boys saying that I should step off all the time, but we'll uh, <laughs> jump back in this week and see how we go. Was that the chat in there, was it? No, nah, no, nah, not so much there. A um, few mates at home. I've got a lot of good mates that follow the races, so I was, uh, had a group chat with plenty of, um, yeah, they were all right. reminded you. Yeah. Because <laughs> you've driven both of those horses probably, like, looking at the record, it's well over 90% of their career you, you've been the driver. Yeah, no, that's right. I think that's last week or was the second time I hadn't driven Rock and Roll Runner and probably the same with Puno. I think I've driven her nearly all the time as well. So, yeah, it was... Good to see, though. Um, as I said, Jack, just he's probably one of the best drivers in the city and he just done a terrific job with both of them. He's done a ride of late, isn't he, Jess? He's absolutely flying. We've seen him get a Group 1 double here the week before and then backed it up again last Saturday with another double. And I know Jackson said to me after Punaway won as he was walking down for a photo, bad week to be suspended and I bet you were definitely feeling it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Luckily, um, the tab account looked a little bit better, though, so we made up for it there. <laughs> Um, another big performance on Saturday night was Expensive Ego. Look, it, it won the Group 3 free-for-all. It, it never looked under threat, Fred. It just did it easy. What do, you, what do you take out of that? I mean, the time wasn't amazing, but just looked like it had another another notch on pre- well, pretty much everything else in the race. Well, he, he's come home in 53-1. Uh, they went slow. It was 2,300. Did what he had to do. Um, Belinda's going to look at uh, you know what races whether she starts him again uh, before the uh, the interdoms. Uh, I thought he just did what he had to do. There were some good runs in that race, mind you, behind yeah. him, uh, which we'll probably focus on in our <coughs> Black Booker segment. But uh, I, I spotted one, and I think Jess even spotted one in the same race. So uh, yeah, look, he he's back. Um, Luke took him to the front, and it was a bit of a procession. They got away with a, a thirty and eight first quarter and a, a twenty nine five second quarter on the back of a fifty one five lead time. Like that is pedestrian. We had uh, uh, you know the lesser class races earlier in the night over twenty three hundred going. You know breaking 49 uh, and, and even quicker. So 
They walked early, so you'd expect a horse like Expensive Ego to come home in 53-1 with those those fractions. But uh, look, he's on target for a, a, you know another crack at the Inter Dominion, and uh, only a couple of weeks away. Um, I, I, we, we may see him race beforehand. If not, uh, he'll go straight in. Uh, is the word from the, the, the McCarthy camp? And they've spaced him out nicely too. You know, yeah, well, they've managed him well. Yeah, um, they, they've managed the horse well. Like he's 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 won a, a truckload up. I think I, I looked the other day. Is it eight hundred? Um, yeah, he's won just short of eight hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, what a, what a good horse he's been. He started his life, of course, with uh, with Thorny, uh, with David Thorne, and then uh, moved across to uh, to uh, had a couple of homes. But he's uh, found a good home there at Cobbity, and geez, he's he's done some good things. Eight hundred and fifty k. That is an expensive ego indeed. I would have thought. Um, we had some of the big guns went out to at the Bathurst on Wednesday. Cam Hart went out there. He had a winner, but uh, gee, it's. Tough to roll Amanda Turnbull on a home patch. She had a double out there. Um, so good night for the Turnbulls. Now, I'm going to touch on the Turnbulls a little bit later, but the Hewitts also. Now, they had races six, seven, eight, one by Bernie, then Jason, then Doug. So they shared it around among the, the, the Hewitt clan. Um, Jason, Jason drove chiselled. Looks a pretty nice tight, one by 14 metres, and, and Bernie had betting jewel. It might be some nice races ahead there, Jess. Yeah, Chiseled was very impressive, of course. It handed up to Rip and Rupert in the run, who had won the Sapling Stakes earlier that season for Bernie Hewitt, and I think Jason had also driven it to that group victory, but Chiseled was able to, at the top of the straight when popped the question to just race away to victory, and I think it had ended up winning by 14 metres, so an impressive two-year-old, and I'm sure he'll have bigger targets in sight for it. I'm going to mention Billy Kitt. Now, Billy Kitt's not a name that's um, it's going to be on everyone's uh, everyone's radar in the in the racing industry but Billy Kitt's a former rugby league player he played for the he was on the Melbourne Storm books and he played a lot in the for the Sunshine Coast now he's he's uh, had a had an injury and he's moved away from rugby league and he's decided he's going to enter our industry in the harness racing industry he is he's got a horse called McArdle Magic Dougie Hewitt another another former Free rugby play, league player yeah. yep <laughs> so I'm not sure, yeah and um so Dougie drove for him. It was just the fourth start for uh, McArdle Magic under Billy Kitt as as his trainer, and it was his first winner. So well done, Billy! Like that's his first winner as a, as a trainer after crossing over from a from a very promising rugby league career. Um, McArdle Magic used to be with Amanda Turnbull, and and Billy's taking on and fourth start in. It's his first winner. Well done, Billy! Like you know, I. I we can only hope that there's plenty more to come and, you know, we, we'd love the idea of more people coming and joining oh, our industry. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But how tough would it be, Jacko, to just sort of – obviously, he's been an owner before, so he's had he's had winners as an owner, but now he's got his training licence and he's come on board. How tough would it be to, to step in and just start from scratch like that? Yeah, no, it definitely wouldn't be easy, but he, I think he um, might hang around the Turnbull boys on it a bit, so he's obviously in the right hands there and they've – yeah. Got him off to a fine start in his training career. Good hands with Dougie Hewitt too, and uh, so yeah, well done, well done, Billy, and, and well done to all the Hewitts. Like it's, uh, we talked about the the unique succession of the winners there at Goulburn on Monday. I think it's pretty unique that we've got the the three Hewitts going bang, 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 three races in a row there at Bathurst on Wednesday night as well. And speaking of Dougie, he had a double at Blaney on Sunday. Amanda and Nathan had doubles as well. Um, that's Amanda and Nathan Turnbull. Nathan Turnbull, what a year he is having for it. He brought up his 100th winner for the season last night at Canberra. Yeah, he raised the bat. And that's the thing. We've talked about him over the last few weeks. He's getting to as many race meetings and as many racetracks. Um, he, he's travelling. And any success that comes for any trainer and uh, anyone that gets out and, and you know, does the mileage to get to the racetracks to win races, they deserve everything they get. We've touched on it with, with Jackson here and David domiciling here for a short period of time. And, uh, you know... you. you Prepared to do some hard yards, whether it be live away from home for a while or travel back and forwards. They would have got home at, you know, pretty late hour and they would have been up bright and early. I'm sure the stable foreman uh, would have had things under control, young Jet. Um, but, yeah, he deserves all the success he gets and raise the bat, Nathan. That's uh, that's the triple figures. Freddie, I did a trip to Blaney uh, when I was getting around the state a few months ago mm -hmm. and the guys said, uh, oh, Fred Hast when Fred Hastings came here, he looked out and he said, Gee, it looks like New Zealand. It's, you know, it's it is a beautiful track. You're talking there, about the, uh, yeah, the, the, with the backdrop, the, the mountain yeah, in the, the background, mountain, yeah, yeah, and yeah, the, and the, the rural track. sort of setting. It's yeah. a beautiful track. That I called Blaney. a couple of uh, times there at Blaney. I, I did a, a few of the, the Carnival of Cups meetings, and uh, that was one of my favourite ones, Blaney. Uh, and and fortunately for those that live there, they'll 
or have visited there, they'll well know that it can get very, very cold. Well, <laughs> I think I uh, had luck on my side. The, the side, the two uh, visits I had to Blaney, I think they got a, a day of a Sunday afternoon of thirty degrees in March, uh, and a and a day of about twenty nine degrees uh, in April once. So I was pretty lucky. But everyone was saying, "Gee, you've you found it. You've come on a good day because it can get a lot colder." Not a big town, but Harness Racing certainly got a big footprint there in Blaney. Yeah. So um, good but track. But, yeah. it's, a, it's a good good little track. Yeah, yeah. and they, and Harness Racing's played a big role in the the history of not a, of the town, but also the the showground yeah. facility there. And they've got a, a commemoration of a milestone year. That's coming up at one of those those race meetings there. So we'll we'll, we'll keep discussing Blaney as we go yep. through the show in coming weeks. Hey, Jacko, Tommy, Tommy Gilligan. He's not a name that we've brought up too many times. We're up to episode nine, but um, you know, certainly gets the job done down there in the Riverina, doesn't he? He had a he had a great night at Griffith on Saturday night. Got a treble there. Yeah, Group One Gilligan. He was the uh, <laughs> original winner of the Tab um, Championship at Wagga. So he's an absolute lar- larrikin of a bloke, Tommy. He um. Does the hard yards, he's a farrier, but he does a super job with his team and he's a very underrated driver, but no doubt he would have celebrated with a few beers on the way home. He, he's just an absolute legend, bloke, Tommy. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. obviously you, you missed the Griffith meeting. If you weren't here, I assume you probably would have been part of that program. Yeah, that's right, yep. Yeah, um, they've got some, they've got their Carnival Cups meeting coming up this Saturday night, actually, so, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later on as we look ahead, but, you know, good luck to the Griffith Club. Great to see them racing again. Yeah, we Wagga. Wagga's the track that we might as well rename it after you or Blake Jones. You, you two seem to seem to dominate down there so much. You weren't there on Tuesday, so Blake Blake said, oh, "Thank you very much." Him and him and Ellen opened up the the Mel, that Melbourne Cup Day program with a with a double. Uh, they're a, they're an incredible combination, aren't they? Yeah, no, they are. They um, work extremely hard. They. They do have their arguments. They used to be sort of they were based with me and Dave. That shared the same uh, training complex at Dave's place, but they've gone out on their own probably eighteen months now, and they're doing a terrific job. They've got a really good um, setup there, and got a couple of young boys that are both getting their trial license. So they've taken them on board since they've moved to Naranda, and they get the rewards. And yeah, Blake's a terrific driver, and Ellen does a really good job for. Already having you like with some of those Group One meetings, and and no, it's, no, it's one, no, it's one, it's one. You haven't one you haven't venue. I, I've. I actually called uh, a couple of Wagga meetings remotely during the COVID crisis right. when yep. uh, uh, we weren't uh, able to get on track. Um, but I've never called live at uh, at Wagga, and that includes at the old track. So right. um, I'm sure I'll get there one of these days. But uh, the team that called down there, uh, including uh, Matt, do a great job. And uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a terrific track. I, as I said, I, I, as recent as uh, oh probably four. Uh, months ago I, I had to step in at the last minute there was some illness and a few things going uh, wrong uh, that that precluded callers to get there uh, just with sickness and I was called off the bench and made the the mercy dash to uh, the French's <laughs> Forest Studios and uh, uh, I got to say uh, the the I think it was about race eight it was late in the day anyway in the sun oh it's horrible it was horrible and 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 Fortunately, what I'm seeing on the TV screen, the punter is seeing on the TV screen because the cameraman has nowhere to go, and <laughs> and you're just you're calling them into the sun and the glare and the flare, and then they come out and you think, thank God they're in the same positions because it was it was hard. <laughs> your heart's in your mouth because you, I can't see them. Don't worry, us, us drivers are like that most of the time. I feel too. better now. <laughs> we're, Thanks, we're driving Jacko, blind a fair bit. <laughs> it's got to be better. Got to be better than the torrential rain <laughs> option. I would have thought. Uh, hey Tamworth on uh, on Thursday doubles for Tommy Ison and Blake. Hughes there. Now speaking of uh, Blake and Tom, they both had winners early at Newcastle on Friday as well. Blake's was part of an early training double for Clayton Harmy. It, that was another card while we talked at the top of the show about all the, the doubles and trebles and everything that was going on. That was another card with nine different drivers snaring wins. Now that they raced at Newcastle yesterday as well. A couple of shout outs. Second win for the season for both Brianna Lindsay and Matthew Harding. Well done guys. It's been a been a long year, no doubt, but good to see him on the, on the winners' podium. But a special mention: um, we had a double for Joshy Gallagher, but that program opened with a career win number one hundred for Grace Pinella. So well done to Grace. Yep, deserves the applause. Yep. Should have given a should have given a round of applause to Nathan Turner before too, actually. But um, oh well. Do Sorry, it now. <laughs> have a, that's for you, Nate. That's for you. Yeah. That's for you, Nathan. Face right. the bat. <laughs> there we go. Fade that one out. Um, hey Grace, um, yeah, that, that's a great performance. That, that's come quite quick. 
yeah, the wind. Grace is such a talented driver and she's definitely notched up those wins rather quickly and we see her up there working for Clayton now and they've got a really strong association. So another driver as well that has come through the mini trots there. So great to foster that future talent. She's um, Is she one that you look at, Jacko, and think she's a serious up-and-coming talent in our sport? Yeah, 100%. I've uh, never actually driven against Grace, but just watching them around that Newcastle area, she just puts them in the right spot and they just seem to run for her. Her first Metro drive here was sensational on that winner for DJ. Mm. She just put it in the right spot and, yeah, seen daylight at the right time and got the rewards. Obviously, she went to the, the Australian Drivers' Championships as a representative of, the New South, of New South Wales, got a winner there. Um, you know, 100 career wins, significant milestone following in the footsteps of a great you know, great family pedigree and uh, I, I'm sure that there are plenty more to come for Grace Penella. Well, Jess, we had a new initiative start. Obviously, November, you you, um, you mentioned it at the, at the end of last week's show, but but it's now in full swing. The Racing for Prostate Cancer initiative is a fantastic initiative. We, we've talked about different things that the harness racing industry does here in New South Wales, uh, you know, Pacing for Pink, Team Teal, different awareness campaigns, but this one... You know, ticks all the boxes, racing for prostate cancer. It's a fantastic initiative. $400 from Club and Angle, from TAB, from Harness Racing New South Wales, and some of the clubs are participating as well. If uh, a horse wearing saddle, well, saddle, saddle cloth, cloth number, number four, four yeah. gets up, and we kicked it off with straight away. Straight away. First race, First race on, on 100% Saturday night. strike rate there. Narano for James Rattray was able to salute. So, that straight away got a $1,200 donation. We've also had Allied Express come on board as a major donor. So they'll be donating $400 as well. So that takes each win to $1,200. Yep. And then later on in the night, we saw King Tiger for Josh Gallagher and Kevin Pajudo salute. So we're now up to $2,400 already after run race meetings. So can't wait to get back out here this afternoon and hopefully see some more number four salute. Absolutely. And they've got that big uh, fundraising uh, awareness dinner uh, at the race meeting here on the 19th. That's, so that'll that, be huge. That will be massive. There's a lot of things in the works there and a few special guest speakers that will be making an appearance. So really looking forward to that. And tickets are available for purchase from the Clubman Angle website. So head on there to book your tickets. Yep, it should be fantastic. The other the other thing we should mention is Allied Expressive have kindly come on board as a, as a, as a sponsor and they're going to match that contribution as well. So well done to Colin McDowell and the, and the whole team there at Allied Express. Thank you for that. You, you doing wonderful things to help out a great cause there. So uh, that's fantastic. And if any other sponsors or you know, corporates want to come on board and support that campaign, I'm, I'm sure that Jess and the team at, at uh, Club and Angle will be more than happy to take that call. Right, we've got a big week of uh, big week of racing ahead of us. We've got a Group 1 night here at Menangle. Jacko, that's you know, part of the reason why you're here, obviously. You know, you, you've set up for the, for the Breeders' Challenge and now the True Blue Series Finals. Some wonderful racing ahead of us. And a lot of these horses have come out of the Breeders' Challenge series and perhaps have actually earmarked this is the one that they're chasing more so than, than the Breeders' Challenge. So if we have a look at the two-year-old fillies, it is a, is a really, really uh, gun you know, sort of field that's been assembled for that. And some of the horses that came out of that Breeders' Challenge, a horse like Savion, Freddie, would think would, uh, would, would certainly be well in market here. Yeah, she was outstanding in the... Uh, in the Final uh, two weeks ago, um, put the writing on the wall, charged home, drew the deepest, a much kind of barrier draw this coming Saturday uh, with the emergency potentially coming out. She comes out of uh, five, gives um, g- you know, gives Ash a few options, but gee, she hit the line hard. She was really running through the line hard in that two-year-old Phillies race and uh, put the writing on the wall for Saturday. I know that one that Brittany Graham talked really highly of when we were doing the New South Wales Bread Show was Miss Fru Fru. Mm. Um, so... That's another one that I that I think might be prominent, Freddie. I'm, you were there at Penrith. I'm interested in your thoughts on on catastrophe. Last start winner at Penrith, Cameron Hart takes the drive and retains the drive. Yeah, look, I think this is a big step up for catastrophe. If you go through uh, her form, I think uh, trainer's done a great job, uh, young Katie McGill. Um, to get her to this stage, I, I know she's a favourite of Katie's, but I, I do think uh, you know it's a it's a big step up for for catastrophe, but a big tick is C. Hart. Uh, he partnered her the other week and, uh, you know, he, he gets them to run. I, I, just on Miss Fru Fru, I, I think she did a really good job through the series. Um, unfortunately for her, the draw is going to make her life a whole lot uh, harder. Uh, and I, I just think Savion wins that. 
Well, speaking of draws, uh, the two-year-old Colts and Geldings, uh, we, we talked about the hard luck story of the, the final of the two-year-old Colts and Geldings and the Breeders' Challenge being better be the best for Nathan Turnbull. Uh, the draw hasn't been any kinder uh, on this one. He's, he's drawn nine and probably, probably come into eight, but still he's going to go uh, very wide, Freddie. <laughs> Yeah, look, again, if he gets it, look, we, we saw what he did. It was, and, and you would have seen it, it was just an incredible, incredible performance in that race and um, a tragedy beaten. Um, I, I think even allowing for the draw, if he paces away, gets away with him and, you know, I'm sure Nathan's got, got you know, every faith that that'll happen. Um, he just wins that as well, I think. I, I know that sounds a bit bullish because there are some nice horses like Rip and Rupert. Uh, and a few others, but I, I just think what he did the other week for a two-year-old and his section, his closing sections, and, and just what he did to regather himself after that, um, just just an outstanding horse. Brittany Graham's going to be out there on track, and she's got uh, Queenslander, which she's very passionate about, where she comes from, but but the trainer of Queenslander is none other than Daryl Graham, mm. and Jack Callaghan will take I reckon we'll get her to yell out the, the yes. Billy Moore Queenslander <laughs> as they're moving up, something like that. Is Brick going to go out there on track and... Retain her impartiality. She's a professional. She's a capital piece. So. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think you. I think you're right. You mentioned Rip and Rupert for Bernie and Jason Hewitt. Yeah, you know, Bernie and Bernie certainly got a, a great record of getting horses up when he brings them to to Menangle of late. So, but yeah, better be the best. Certainly looks the the one to beat, Jess. Yes, yeah, standout runner there. I I think as long as he scores up, or even if he doesn't, like he did in the final last start, I still think he's definitely what was the, the one margin? to be. A couple of meters, like yeah. it was insane. He was thirty meters, twenty five, thirty meters behind them, and, and and I know that the tempo backed off, and he was able to catch them, and just got luck on the pegs. But he, he another, I don't know what, maybe twenty meters. He's just about in front. Right. So just an incredible performance, I thought, and for a two year old to, and I guess you've seen good. Yeah, juveniles, Jackson, that have, have, you know, they've got it up in the head. And he's, I think once he gets past some of his other little issues, he's, he's got it in the head to be a real top horse. Yeah, no, definitely. I was speaking to Nath on Saturday night about it. He said he's never actually galloped in his life. He said as soon as they broke him in, he just paced his whole life. And he, as soon as he got it wrong, he just didn't know what to do, how to get back into a pace. So I'm sure Nath will be on top of it on Saturday night. And I think, yeah, I think everyone will be cheering for him because it was pretty hard to watch, really. The vagaries of racing. Well, Jacko, you've got a uh, you've got a Group One drive yourself in the three year old Phillies uh, final. You've got she's a Caribbean for David Kennedy. Yeah, no, she's a filly. We deliberately sort of missed the main series um, semi finals with her to target her for this race. So we're sort of hoping that um, Ideal and Dreams or Madrid actually won the final, so we could uh, have a little bit less opposition. But um, yeah, the draws. There now, and we've drawn out wide, but she's going really well. So if um, we can lob in a spot, she'll be thereabouts. I think. Do you think that Madrid and Ideal are dreams? That I mean, on paper, it looks like the obvious dangers. Yeah, no, definitely. They're both two really, really good fillies. Um, Madrid just got parked up there in that major f- um, final, and that's not her go. Ideal in Dreams went really, really well in the final. She's been fine all through the series. So they're them two are the clear um, ones to beat. Jess, you, you've had your eye on Ideal in Dreams. Obviously, you identified as a black booker, and, and Ideal and Dream certainly didn't let you down in that in that final uh, that we saw a fortnight ago. Which way are you sort of hedging your bets on this one? Yeah, again, the draw's gone in favour of Ideal and Dreams over Madrid, so I'm going to have to stick in the Ideal and Dreams camp here. I think she gets the chance to get a Group One win next to her name, and. I've said this before on the show, she's the defending champion of the True Blue series from last year, and mm. I think she actually only just beat She's a Caribbean by a short margin in that final yeah, last she, year. Yeah, <laughs> she got me right on the look. On the line, <laughs> so. How consistent is your feeling? Though? Like, she, she has just been, she's such a professional racehorse, isn't she? Yeah, that's that's it, Fred. She's really consistent. She's got really good speed. She's uh, the second foal out of She's a Runner, who was a um, Oaks winner herself, and then obviously... Um, um, Rock and roll runners the first foal. He's a Group One winner himself, so it'd be nice if she can continue the trend and follow that Group One way. What can you tell us about Secret Bling for Trev White and Peter McRae? Really, really nice filly. Very underrated. Got super speed. Unfortunately for Trev and um, Pete, I think they've drawn the car park with me, so mm. they're going to need a hell of a lot of luck, like like us. But um, yeah, no, she's a really nice filly. Freddie, do you think that we can we can forgive that that run of Madrid a fortnight ago? I always, and I've said it before on this podcast, always forgive a good horse one run. Um, 
as as Jackson said, stuck out there. Um, didn't get a lot of luck. Dropped out. But you know she's too good to dismiss. I, I think it's an outstanding race that three year old Phillies race. So even even Josh Powdley's got a, a runner there, uh, Nazoni. So uh, you know there's some real talent there. But I, I think Ideal and Dreams in Madrid, and uh, also um, she's Caribbean. I think they're the, the the big three in that race for mine. What a great story, Josh Powdley. It's his first ever Group One uh, runner mm. that he's going to be able to line up. I'm not sure if Josh is going to be able to make it. On course, and, and great for Jimmy Brown to get a drive in a Group One mm. as well. So yeah, we wish Josh uh, all the luck in that final. Um, you know, nothing. There's no favours given or, or uh, in a Group One final. But yeah, what a fantastic story. We, we've talked on this show a couple of times about the, you know, some of the the, um, the the sad story that Josh and his family have had to endure. So to see them qualify a horse for a Group One final, absolutely fantastic. And then we move into three-year-old Colts and Geldings. This is another great, great race, Freddie. We've got Mahomes, we've got Tim's a Trooper, we've got King Tiger. I mean, and I could keep going through the page on that one. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of depth in this race. I thought King Tiger's win on Saturday night, gee, it showed some courage and uh, was, was under a lot of pressure a fair way from home and it just kept fighting. And I've got to say, in some small way, the way the horse responded to Josh's urgings, it just sort of did take me back a little bit to his old man, uh, you know, the way Tiger Tara could find in in a, in a bit of a, a close a tussle. So, um, but we've talked about barrier draws a bit. He's drawn out in the car park, King Tiger. Um, Mahomes, he was a super run in the in the uh, the big final uh, two weeks ago, and uh, he's drawn inside of Tim's a trooper and and other decent horses in that race. Um, you know, it's going to be a beauty. But I do think I do think Mahomes put the riding on the wall. I think he and King Tiger, Tim's a trooper, they're the big three in that race. It's interesting, Peter Russo actually said in the lead-up to the uh, the Breeders' Challenge final that they were targeting the blue. Uh, I don't know whether that starts to skew it more in Mahomes' corner when we, when we start to think about how this race might shape. Well, well, you, you even said some of your horses were being sort of targeted for the blue series, so it, it, it sort of does give you a little bit more confidence when you, you know that's the... The grand final is you know, the other one was a bonus, and I'm sure they would have taken it if it won. But if they've targeted this race, it shows that there's a little bit of intent there, and uh, you know, that, and purpose to have it ready on that that particular night. And obviously, Tim's a trooper came out and won the the uh, the two year old Colts and Geldings final in the Breeders Challenge last year, last so year yeah, showing so. that you know can do it. Robbie's Robbie's back in the chair, so. Yeah, as you said, a lot of depth in that. And then we obviously the free-for-all has got some serious depth to it as well, Jess. Um, you know, we, we see Alter Orlando line up. We've got Zeus Bromac. We've got Wolf Stride. But I think all eyes are going to be on the return of Spirit of St. Louis as we look ahead to an Inter-Dominion campaign. Yeah, just as you said there, he's got the Inter-Dominion as his main target towards the back end of the season. And it'll be the first time back here at Menangle we've seen him since that Queensland campaign. He did trail last Wednesday and there are a few of the other runners that actually line up in this free-for-all that tried to, trailed against him, but he was too impressive there. I think another one to keep an eye out for is Zeus Bromac. We talk about him <laughs> each week, Every week, but he has just been hitting the line enormously and I don't see why he can't win this race again on Saturday night. And I'm an unabashed fan of Wolf Stride as well. So uh, it shapes up as being a, a terrific race. Uh, unfortunately for where you've been bopping, who loves to get up on the on the speed, he's drawn out wide, so he's going to have to do a bit of work early. Had he drawn closer, uh, I would have given him some little hope of maybe causing the upset. But again, it's, uh, it's a good match-up here. And uh, you're on the money there, Jess, with Zeus Bromack. He's always uh, thereabouts. And the ones we haven't talked about, you know, perfect stride mm. you know, for Jack Trainer. Bun Doran just keeps coming to town and, and delivering and, and sort of featuring, picking up checks along the way. And then a horse like the Honey Queen who showed a fair bit of promise, you know, last, last campaign Gross. and, um, you know, Very coming back from a spell. So, yeah, it should be fantastic. All right. Well, Jacko, we're going to go to the heart-melting moment of this podcast because I know what you're about to say. The best thing or the best person you saw this week, mate? Yeah, no, the best person I saw this week was heading back home on Sunday to see me daughter for a for a um, christening. So, yeah, it was good to see mum and bub. So that was definitely the best thing I saw this week. Yeah, that's fantastic. How'd you go with the, the – like, obviously, there's so many floods down there through the Riverina and those western, western districts, towns. 
Yeah, no, it's it? um, unbelievable. I come back yesterday afternoon and the roads were just shutting everywhere behind me. The river's meant to peak around home it's probably Thursday, they're talking. So I'd hate to see how wet it's going to be in the next sort of week to 10 days. It's, yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. Yeah, well, mate, it's great that you've managed to do that return trip and, you know, get in to see the family, but also have you back here for what is a, a big week of racing. How old's Millie? Uh, six months, so six yeah, months, she's yeah. an absolute champion kid. So <laughs> how was, hard was it getting back in the car? It must have been. Yeah, no, hard. there was a few tears from mum and maybe yeah. one from myself. Uh, but, uh, yeah. They're hopefully going to come down in the next week or so. So awesome. it'd be good to see me. Never gets easier. Um, I remember when I was remember when I was uh, covering the cricket for Channel Ten, and I could always tell when retirement was looming how how hard it was for those blokes to to say goodbye to their family when the little kids started to get to a point where they knew dad was going away. I, I remember going back to the newsroom one day saying, I don't reckon it's far, it's not that far away for Ricky Ponning. And I, I remember Brad Haddon and some of those guys. And, you know, it, was a, it wasn't a bad metric to, to work out when retirement was coming because it never got easier for those guys, you know, the, the amount of time they spend away. So mate, it's great to have you back here anyway. Um, Jess, what was the best thing you saw this week? Yeah, we spoke about it earlier in the show, but it was the breeding and only du- owning double by Normie Wall and last Monday at Goulburn. We touched on that earlier in the show, but harness racing is just a great sport. It doesn't matter if you're 89 years of age or five years old just starting out in the mini trots. Anyone can enjoy the sport. Anyone can love a horse and... We, it's just great for harness racing. I'd just be happy to get out of bed when I'm 89. I'd, I'd just be happy to get to 89, let alone training uh, horses and owning and breeding horses. Well done to Norm. Um, Little Bliss. I've got to talk about Little Bliss. Um, Troy Williams has done a super job with this mare. She was pretty much pigeonholed a Penrith horse. She won seven races at Penrith, and that was kind of where you thought she'd go. And, and just a little bit like uh, the situation with Dave Kennedy and, and Jackson, they, they've come up here because of floods. Um Troy had to move his horses during the floods out in the Hawkesbury uh, earlier uh, in the piece and uh, Little Bliss was thrown around in a race here or in a trial and then raced and then she just hit her straps and she was fourth in a group one and she's won seven races here now and her win on Saturday, uh, well done to Troy. Uh, Rob's got a great affinity with her, Rob Morris, but uh, she's just a a little beauty, Little Bliss, and uh, she's now won over 130 grand and I said to Troy in a radio interview on Sunday on On The Pace, did you ever see her winning seven races at Menangle? And he said, I was flat out considering she could win seven races at Penrith, let alone I would have thought you were mad. What a great job he's done with her. Yeah, and, and he's been through a fair bit this year, yeah. Troy, so well done with that. All right, Jacko, mate, it's great to have you on the show. And, and, and particularly, you know, obviously sitting here in the studio at Menangle's not that easy to get some of our regional participants uh, to be part of it. So we thought we'd take the opportunity while you while you're bunkered down here in Sydney to make sure we got you on the show because I, I think you, you've got a fascinating journey. We were talking before the show. You're from a little town south of a little town. <laughs> Run us through, where'd you grow up? Yeah, a little town called Colliambly. So it's a, um, yeah, like a farming, farming town, rice farm originally, but the price of water goes through the roof. So the farmers have had to sort of make earns the other way so cotton corn wheat yeah it's a real um, farmer community so um, both my grandfathers were both farmers and trotting trainers so that's how I was sort of bought into the game yeah did it stay with the next generation or did it skip one and end up with you through your grandfather uh on the last of them or me and Blakey Jones so he's we're cousins on the same side but um we're the last of the um trotting generation yeah there's no one's following us in that way but the rest have all gone down the farming route or gone and got their own trades or something like that, yeah. So when did you sort of start to say, well, okay, this might be a lifestyle or a career for me? Yeah, no, always loved it, but um, mum and dad were very uh, strict on me getting a trade before I actually went full-time into it. So um, qualified cabinet maker, um, done me trade there, and then as soon as I finished that, I was straight out of there working full-time with, with Dave Kennedy, who's my uncle, yeah. Okay, so you whipped up some, uh, what are you whipped up, like a bit of a, a wardrobe, or what's what's Millie got in the in the crib that you've you've whipped up as the as the qualified carpenter? Definitely nothing. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> I have not touched a tool since I left. Is that right? <laughs> nah, I was didn't. It for you? I had one thing on me mind in my whole life, and that it's was the horses. Never, never to be uh, carrying a hammer around. <laughs> you'd, you'd have to be relatively handy, though. If, if we said, Jacko, make us a little uh, kids kids table and chair or something like that, you'd be able to. Whip that up in about five seconds, wouldn't you? No, definitely not. And, <laughs> if, and if you ask the missus, she'll definitely agree with that. 
<laughs> what? Um, so, but it's it must be good to have up your sleeve. Just in, you know, obviously we've seen the worst of times. Obviously, our industry managed to managed to survive and in some ways thrive through COVID. But there's all obviously a lot of nervous energy. <laughs> you know, the world, who knows what's happening in the world? It must be nice to have that up your sleeve just in case. Yeah, no, it definitely is. Like, it's not an easy game to make a lifestyle out of the trotting industry, but I'm just blessed that I've had Dave there to support me the whole time, and he's a really terrific trainer and got a really strong backing from him, which has really cemented my uh, career in the harness racing, yeah. See, there was people, those parents, aren't they? Hey, get the trade and... Yeah, but he hasn't, he hasn't hit a <laughs> nail in, in anger. <laughs> 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 I want to head back to earlier this year. You tasted your first Group 1 success when you won the TAB Regional Championships down there, your home track of Wagga, board rock and roll runner for David Kennedy. Just days before that, you welcomed your first child, little Millie, into the world. How are the emotions after that win? And would you say that's your biggest career highlight to date? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was um, a fair bit of pressure, but um, just to get that, just crossing that line, the feeling... I had was just something I've never experienced before and something that I just wish I could experience a lot more. But, yeah, no, it was so good. Just to do it with Dave was even more special. Um, Millie was on track, my wife and both my parents and everyone. So, yeah, it was just surreal, yeah. I suspect you've answered this question, but I'll ask it anyway and maybe go down a different tack. Biggest influence to your career, obviously, your Uncle David and, you know, um, yeah, your grandparents, I suspect, but in terms of you know, driving and, 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 and understanding the, the art of driving, who would you say is your biggest influence or has been? Um, well, probably a bit, little bit left field. Trev Monday was sort of struggling around the Menangal area and he sort of wanted to get out of the city and he went and worked for Dave there for, oh, it was a good probably year, two, maybe two years, and he was someone I looked up to and he really um, taught me the ins and outs of driving like he was a... Um, I think he represented New South Wales as a junior himself. Um, so he was one that taught me a lot about the driving game. So, yeah, I've probably got to thank him a little bit. Okay. So, mate, it must be fantastic, though. To, I, I know that we've got you here at Menangle now to drive, like, drive at headquarters, and it's a great track. It's probably the best track in the world that we've got right here. But to know that week week after week you're driving on a premier track there that you know a lot of lot of money and, and investments been made into that Riverina complex you have got elite facilities there must be must be great to be able to turn out on that week after week oh it's unbelievable like the world class facilities and the track I think is probably the second best track in Australia really Look, the times they run is just unbelievable probably hard to do form for people that don't know the track but um, we can sort of evaluated a little bit there now I think it's just yeah such they've done such a terrific job yeah and that Easter carnival with the four and five year old championships what's it done for racing in in the Riverina oh it's huge Greg Gangle since he's taken over down there has done an unbelievable job uh, I think he had some dog race there one night yeah. I've never seen a crowd at the trots like it. it was absolutely huge and then he um, just pumped up that Easter carnival just the atmosphere was so good like he's done a terrific job down there Greg what about for the the because the river, we talk about Riverina racing, and it's sort of the the hub is there in Wagga. But there's all the the little clubs that have their, the their boutique carnival, yeah. yeah, the boutique carnival races. You know, your Coolermans and your Leetons and some of those those sort of clubs that pour so much time Griffith. and effort. It's all volunteer driven, and it's it's the passion and the history that goes into it. I, you know, I spent I've been to Coolerman a couple of times, and I love going in there. And on the wall, they've got hundred years worth of memorabilia there that you know has got. It looks like it's been there for a hundred years, you know the the photos and the and the relics of of the, the the thread and the undercurrent of our sport. You know, what, do you like going and racing at those little little tracks like that? Yeah, my favourite time of year is the uh, Leeton Breeders' Plate Carnival, which is over the Christmas New Year's period. The crowd there is just huge. Back when I was a kid, it was a race that everyone wanted to win the Breeders' Plate. Like it was a, the first two year old race of the year. Always get a really really good race so it's something i haven't won yet but i'd like to win it one day hopefully and it's yeah the, the carnival atmosphere is so good well you're gonna get good it should be a good atmosphere like the the carnival cups so far have been fantastic through through cowra and yagara and that and obviously that that party turns up in town leeton will be one of them so hopefully uh you know we get a great atmosphere and you know i look forward to seeing how you go on that 
Yeah, no, thanks. Like June is another one, Australia Day. They get a super turnout. Yep, and yep. Tamora's another one. They do a really good job promoting their carnival as well. Yeah. They always, Tamora, what I like, they always have a unique offering. I think one year they had the train heading out there to Tamora and it's always just a great atmosphere. Yeah, no, Jane Walker, she does a good job pumping all that up. It's really good. The drivers down in, the, in that area, um, down in the, in the Riverina, we, we, we've touched on Blake Jones, uh, we, you know, Blake McAuliffe and so many others, uh, Peter McRae. What about the invasion? I'll say that very politely. The the, the, the crossover from the border, the strength that yeah that that probably illustrates us how competitive the racing is in that area because you, you're not just dealing with the local pool of talent, which is quite quite extensive. You've then got the people coming across, the the good trainers and drivers coming over the border. Yeah, no, that's right. I take away your Menanga race, and I think Wagga the River Rain is definitely the second hardest spot to win a race in New South Wales. You get Russell Jack, Craig Turnbull, the likes of other Victorian trainers to bring their better ones across because we obviously got such good prize money in New South Wales now and you've got your three-year-old concession claim, so they're utilising all of that. So if you can win a race at Wagga, I'll guarantee you can nearly win a race anywhere else in New South Wales. All right. What's the plans, mate? So you, obviously the, the weather, you obviously got an eye on the, on the weather and the flood situation, but you're here this weekend. What's the plans? Yeah, as you said, a um, bit weather-related, so... Um, I'll definitely stick around next week. We've got one qualified in the um, country series final, so we'll be here f- for that. And the way it's looking, I think I might be here probably another couple, maybe two to three weeks. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what the weather gods do. Hard to change a nappy from afar, mate. Yeah, no, it's something <laughs> I'm definitely not whinging about. <laughs> mate, it's fantastic to have you here. All right, well, we have got a, another huge week of racing. Obviously, uh, we've got a Group 1 carnival at Menangle on Saturday night. But before we get to that, we've got seven races today. Fred, um, Jacko, you're back. Obviously, we, we touched on it earlier. You had a little bit of a holiday, um, but you're back in the last. You got scared stiff. Yeah, no, he's a bloke we purchased out in New Zealand. He's done a really good job. He's won two out of four and just got ran down in the Indigenous Drivers race here Saturday week. So looks um, not a bad race for him today, but just to... Draw is probably going to hurt, so we'll just see where we settle, but he'll definitely be in the money somewhere, I think. You must be itching to get back in the chair. Yeah, no, definitely, especially down here. It's sort of hard to watch from the sidelines. bit different. I I suppose you've been out on the track most mornings, like working horses while you're based here. Yeah, no, definitely, that's right, yep. And and does that help you to get a better understanding of this track and the nuances of it and how you go about navigating your way around, you know, tactically how you you might – Engineer a race? Yeah, the first couple of days when I worked out here, I was sort of looking at the stopwatch and went, oh, geez, better ease up a bit here. I don't <laughs> want to be going that hard. So it definitely um, is it's definitely different, yeah. So what makes – is it the long straight that makes it so – because Riverine is obviously a lot tighter. Is, it, is that what you're paying attention to and what you've got to keep in mind? Yeah, they just get over the ground so much quicker here on the bigger straight and the bigger track, obviously, yeah. Okay. Freddie, uh, it is a big race, big race card today. Yeah, we've got we're a bit later too, aren't we? Yeah, well, yeah, we start a bit later with seven races, but there, there's some nice horses, a couple of trot races, a um, few races that are you know, pretty tough. I, I thought the last race was about the best race of the day, a couple of scratchings, uh, and one of those was a bit of a chance outside fighter. So uh, you've got Rubini, an outside fighter, coming out. I think some Chevron's the interesting runner from the Jack Trainer camp. Of course, Jack, as we alluded earlier, is over uh, for the New Zealand Trotting Cup, and, and we've got representation there uh, today, which is pretty exciting. Um, but Scared Stiff certainly going to be in the mix for sure, I think, uh, despite the fact it's drawn out. But at least there's only uh, six others inside you. Yeah, that's right. And, and his biggest asset is his speed. So this track will really suit him. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing you back out there, Jacko. Uh, Wednesday, so tomorrow, sorry, uh, yes, tomorrow, Bathurst Wednesday. We've got Penrith on Thursday, Newcastle Friday. Bankstown's on Monday, which is which is great. You know, we, we I know that's one of your favourites. Yeah, yeah, always love getting back to the home track. Personal favourite there. So happy to be at Bankstown on Monday. Blaney's on Sunday and Carnival of Cups, as I said before, is at Griffith on Saturday night. It's the fourth stop of the the, the big uh, 25, I think it's 25 on the schedule across the, the journey. I'll, I'll be there on, on Saturday night in Griffith. So it should be a fantastic race night there. Of course, that will run in conjunction or at the same time as we have got a huge Group 1 night and, and a great free-for-all here on Saturday night, Fred. Uh, so four Group 1s, uh, $100,000 each, those races. Uh, Sky Racing Active coverage will be in play as well. Brick Graham will be here. She'll be out on track. She'll be a, another fantastic night. Will be. Uh, 
BK going to uh, cover the meeting um, on Saturday night with uh, with Britt and uh, should be a beauty. And uh, I've just got to I mentioned the New Zealand Trotting Cup. Remiss if I don't say go New South Wales and uh, go Majestic Cruiser. Uh, Gremo and Cam, uh, nice draw. Great race. Always has been a great race, but... Uh, She's that field's a good one today. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All reports, Majestic Cruiser settled in pretty nice too. Yeah. From all reports that I've seen in the articles, Grimo said he settled in well and has been working well. So no doubt we'll all be out here this afternoon and across New South Wales cheering for them. And I'm sure the Riverina will definitely be a region that would be erupting if they get close. Yeah, yeah. two Riverina boys doing us proud, so hopefully yeah. they don't get the cup. All right. How's our black bookers going? How are you going, Jess? Uh, mine from last week's in tonight at uh, Leiden, so we'll have to stick around for that one. Let's load up. I saw, <laughs> I saw uh, yeah, what, which, one did, which one was that again? That was Sporting Rage, okay. Bruce right, Hartley. Let's keep an eye out for that at Leiden. I saw Brittany Graham's black booker, Vic Sun, is in action yeah, Vic this Sun. week as well. Is it this week, yeah. And I'm, uh, I'm real keen on Burnham Boy. It's run on Saturday yeah, behind Expensive Ego. It steam time and he's just been coming back some horses and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong some horses go better in the warmer weather the cooler weather than they do in the cooler weather and, and vice versa you sort of label them a, a spring horse or a, a summer horse versus a winter horse Burnham boy just seems to excel as we get into the warmer weather is that a, is that a thing yeah no definitely some horses are like that I actually drove Burnham boy two out of his last three runs yeah. and I've been super happy if his runs he's definitely knocking on the door yeah Good run the other night. Yeah, it was. Vic Sun's actually in the last at Menangle on Saturday night uh, the in, the, in the Stan Dumasey Memorial for the Trotters. So keep an eye out for that. Brittany Graham's a pretty good judge and she did flag that one for us. Uh, good show. Yeah. My one, sorry, for this week oh, actually. Gen- yeah, comes about in race one on Saturday, Stingray Tara. I thought it hit the line, it couldn't get a run on Saturday night in the group three free for all and gets a significant drop back in class with Jack Brown's five point claim. So. Sticking with Stingray Tara in the first on Saturday. Good luck. You got you Thank got anything you. for us to keep an eye on, Jackson? Um, I'll throw one under out. Couldn't recommend. The boys tell me she's airborne at home. She's first up tonight at Leeton, drawn about five, race five, I think. So if she can lob in front, I think she'll give a really good sight. Which one's that? Couldn't recommend. Couldn't recommend. I can't <laughs> recommend race That's five. That's always a good name oh, yeah. to do. I'm actually recommending it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a turn of phrase. <laughs> yeah. or Ra- race of five, horse. number five it is. And you can get 420 on tab fixed right now. So there you go. Okay. Well, our guests have had pretty good strike rate with mm. throwing up uh, ones to watch. So we don't put a time frame on it. Though. As long as they win at some point down the track, we can, we can say Looks that they good. got it right. <laughs> Should get a, have a promo. <laughs> <laughs> get a promo podcast. <laughs> All right. Well, we've had a good show. Um, Jackson, fantastic to have you here. Uh, you know, let's hope you, you come back on to – you've only, you only been out for a week, but let's hope the comeback is, uh, is successful for you this afternoon. Yeah, no, nah, thanks, mate. We'll do our best. Yep, great to have you on the show. Freddie, thanks for your time. Pleasure. Enjoy Saturday off. Thank you. Yes, and Jess, yeah. you got, uh, you'll be out there on track today. You'll be out there again Saturday night. Yeah, taking some more photos. Hopefully get another one of Jackson out there in the last and nice. go the number four for prostate cancer. Never stops, does it? Well, to everyone out there, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, if you if you feel inclined, please like, share, follow, tell your friends about it, uh, let, them, let them know that the sprint lane's out there and because we, we love having your company and we want more people to tune in to the great story that is harness racing in New South Wales. Thanks for your time. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye.